Where's Fen? Here's if it's not popping up. Hold on, I'm going to close this. I hope you can share a screen. I've worked a while on this. Share screen. Here it is, I think. Okay. Let's put that down. Bring this up. Okay. So uh, as we've done in the past, I'm going backwards and I'm covering the things that I neglected to mention. So uh, one thing I wanted to mention was potentially on um, the machine issue. Uh, I have a, a theory about that. And here is, um, uh, which was the potentially the heavy load and the machine reference and you couldn't get the machines off the ground. And this um, was another thing that, that was referenced in a scrapbook. It was the story about Peggy getting the vacuum cleaner. And, um, uh, and so I think uh, consistent with, you know, we've got the garbage truck, we've got the can opener, we've got the helicopter, we've got the plane that can't, can't get up, up the ground. Uh, and then we had the story of the vacuum. So um, anyway, I'm not gonna tell you what I think uh, the pattern answer is, as I don't um, in these videos, because I think it's more fun for you to think about, but I do think that might be along the same lines of that pattern. And then you have to figure out where, what does it mean in terms of a solution? And what is the, the hit, like the hidden meaning behind it? Uh, okay, so then we get to, uh, that was from scrapbook 224, by the way. Uh, we get to Buffalo Cowboys. And so let's go through that. So the first thing we notice in terms of catching discrepancies is on page 64, the cars, he says that th there are two pictures of Skippy, Skippy's car, one with Skippy in it with no windshield, and then another um, with um, Don, uh, Donnie and June in it uh, with before the windshield fell off. Um, some have mentioned that the cars don't look alike. Uh, obviously the door is missing off of the one. And um, I noticed that the line, aside from the window issue, I noticed that the line on the car, um, uh, on the side of the car doesn't look the same. Um, we don't see the front of the car in, um, in, in this, second picture either. So that could just be another situation where we have um, a, pur a purposeful fib. And again, when you see those purposeful fibs, you know, think about that in terms of hints. And again, like we've discussed in prior videos, we have the, the car pattern going on. All right, then, um, and I thought maybe this was, the bottom picture might've been, the bullet, um, which was Forrest's car because of June sitting on the cushion. But then I went into, um, into uh, Too Far to Walk. And, um, oh, I just had it a second ago. Here it is. And the bullet, um, it doesn't look like the bullet either. The bullet has, even without the roof in um, on the bullet, uh, if that were taken off, it doesn't look like the bullet either because the bullet has three lines on the side. So um, anyway, it's not the bullet. It doesn't appear to be the bullet either, at least um, from what I can at least guess and tell. Uh, anyway, so again, the car theme continues. Then we had... Um, Buffalo Cowboy, he talks about how they went off to, Skippy had an old car with no top. It had a big seat in the front and that's all. And then he says, one day when a buffalo wandered out of Yellowstone Park and started tearing up fences, Donnie Joe thought we should go out and round it up. So 
relative to rambling and rumbling, that's not the right story. There's a discrepancy in that story that in rambling and rumbling, he says that the buffalo was out um, wandering and tearing up fences, but also killing cows. So again, another discrepancy, discrepancy uh, in the stories. So you should write that down about the addition of the cows. And you're gonna see the cows in um, coming up in the next story. So we've got buffaloes and cows going on aside from Bessie, the, Bess the Bessie and Me chapter. So he's like, again, we discussed the Bugs Bunny hit me over the head, King Bugs Bunny hit me over the head. He's uh, hit me over the head now with cows. Um, so then, uh, then also rambling and rumbling tells you it was my idea to go out and catch it as opposed to in the story, Donnie Joe's idea to go out and catch it. So he purposely changes the story um, to, to Donnie Joe. Uh, so again, that's something you should think about and um, think what what's going on here besides telling a story about a buffalo. All right, then uh, they go out <clears throat> and in uh, the story in, in the thrill of the chase, they said that they started calling him Cody. But in the in the rambling and rumbling, they do not give the buffalo. He does not give the buffalo a name. So again, another discrepancy. Uh, he then continues on to tell you the, uh, that the story is consistent where he basically says that he goes to throw the loop over Cody's head and that it, it, um, it, it was easy to do because um, this buffalo had no enemies. So that's consistent in both spots. And, um, and the story in, in um, The Throw of the Chase tells you that uh, Cody didn't notice much uh, Skippy started honking the horn, and um, eventually the, the <clears throat> buffalo realized that he was that something was wrong and started moving around. Uh, the, the story is then consistent, but the story in in rambling and rumbling about the buffalo is a lot shorter than it is in in the book. And um, so again, keep your head out head up for inconsistencies. He does say that um, that that Cody, uh, the buffalo, starts moving. Hi, Sledneck. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. So let's see. He goes out. Um, Cody decides to change venue, and then he starts panicking. He mentions in the Cody's in the book that um, he repeats the reference that he wishes he had his shoes on. So this is the second story that you're missing Forrest wearing the shoes. Uh, so that's something to think about. And the other place that you're gonna see, which we'll talk about in a moment, once we talk about the potential um, underlying themes of Cody, um, at least to the extent that I'll, I'll divulge, uh, what, what is he getting at? With, with the missing shoes. Uh, da, 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 he then, um, let's see. Cupcake, just warning, Cupcake might bark, bark, the dog down the hallway is barking again. Uh, let's see, Skippy steered the car, they dodged through some trees. I would suggest to you that you read, um, that you read the rambling and rumblings um, uh, section on the story um, as a as a hint. Um, I'm not going to tell you the significance of it, but uh, I would suggest that that in my opinion, there's a hint in that scrapbook story about uh, Cody in the rambling and rumbling version. Uh, okay, so then Cody's grazing. He starts moving. They go be behind the trees. Um, oh, here's, here's the other difference in the Cody story in the book. They continue on um, to say, they, they get thrown in the water. Um, they say that the noise is like a helicopter with a fan. That's, that's included in the book. So again, we've got another 
uh, piece of equipment reference uh, sprinkled in this chapter uh, is a continuation of that pattern. Then um, I never really figured out what he, what I think there's a significance of this sentence. When last we saw him, he was still running and the tires were bouncing wildly like some circus acrobat. I'm not sure, to me, it's sort of a literary device and I, I, I've never figured out if that had any hidden meaning, but that's, uh, that's different in, in this version of the story. Uh, then he goes on again and he repeats the story about his lost shoes. And <clears throat> then they went um, and he had to walk home again. So we just had a, a story where he um, was skipping and they drove home and now he's walking home and he's gonna be walking home again in stout hearted men. So that's something for you to think about. Um, and in, this, in the book, they tell you that Cody was found and shot uh, and then um, his meat was made into Buffalo burgers at the Stagecoach Inn. It made me really mad, so I never ate there again. That story is inconsistent with, um, with the book, with the rambling and rumbling, rather. Um, he does not tell you in rambling and rumbling that Cody died. Uh, he says, uh, the last we saw of the bull, he was still running and the tires were bouncing wildly. Um, and then he says, I have often wondered if the car is still in the creek. So he changes the story. So again, in the book version, he tells you that Cody died. So, you know, what is, what's, what's the reasoning? Notice that he never told us what kind of car it was. Uh, well, he says it was Skippy's car. Um, he doesn't say the brand. Uh, I don't know if elsewhere, I'll have to look before Saturday um, when I'm gonna do um, my war for me, whether he tells us the make and model of, of Skippy's car. It doesn't say here on page 64. Um, so anyway, I'll take a look at that. Okay, so those are the things that I think you should think about. And I'm gonna give you some thoughts about where he hits you over the head with it. Oh, we have another, we have another comment. Identify, oh, here we go. You've got it as a 1907 Marvel car company. So that, that's uh, consistent with our, uh, I, don't, I don't know that brand of car. So <laughs> if you're telling, if you're making, if you're teasing me because of the Marvel uh, cartoon, uh, I don't know the reference, so I'll have to I'll have to take a look at the uh, at the car. But hey, just wait. You don't believe me? Fine. But uh, I'm telling you, uh, there's you should be thinking about about the Marvel. Uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, we'll continue on, and let's see. So the other places he references the buffalo is he does it several times. So the buffalo is something to think about. And he, he talks about scrapbook 240 from November of 2019. He talks to you about the power of the dance and he points to the buffalo on his wall. Uh, cupcake, little doggy, stop that. She's itchy. So apparently, so I took Cupcake to the vet the other day. She was not feeling well, plus she had to get her rabies shots. But apparently the reason why she's itchy and making an, <clears throat> making noise over there is that she got a little sunburn. <laughs> and so now I have to put baby suntan lotion on her when we go hiking and give her some Benadryl. So she's a little, she's, she's like itching everywhere. It's kind of funny. Oh yeah, no, I know, I know. Uh, we don't, he, we don't talk about those people on, on my storytelling time. Uh, let's see. The shape of the fender, very simple curve with the bead on the trim. Well, that would be, if that's truly a car, which I, I'm not familiar with, that would be, that would be interesting if that's what it was. Uh, okay, so anyway, back to the buffalo. So this is very important in terms of, um, in my opinion, things to pay attention to. And, and the significance behind, one of, the, one of the, in my opinion, significant points behind Cody. 
So in scrapbook 240, which as you know, he only went up to like 250 uh, until the chase concluded, uh, that we had very late in the game, this, the power of the dance with the buffalo on the wall. And um, he, he reminds us about Joe Rivera, who was a friend of his, as you may recall, who had strong ties with the Native American um, culture as well. And they had common interests in that regard that Joe uh, took him to an event. Let's see, uh, Joe gave him the skull who it was from an Indian who said it was used in a ceremony in the Greengrass, Montana. Uh, and then he repeats, he's telling you in scrapbook 138, which I actually think he meant scrapbook, he might have meant scrapbook 238, where he tells you another story about Native American uh, mythology. Uh, well, not mythology, Native American history in that story. Uh, that he's again hitting your head, hitting you over the head with a Native American tie. So Cody, I think one of the significance is, uh, significant ties to Cody is the Native American link again. And we're going to talk about a couple other things as well. Uh, the buffalo is very important, as you may have, may be aware by now, in um, the Native American culture in terms of following the buffalo as a way of life and following the buffalo for meat. And basically, every, it sounds like every part of the buffalo was used by the Native American, certain American, uh, Native American people for um, usage in their everyday lives. The teepee, high, the teepee uh, walls, the, the floors of the teepee, the utensils I was watching a video were used from, I think it was either the bones or the horns. Face of uh, the hair was used for rope. So basically, the, the buffalo was sacred to um, the na certain Native American tribes. I wouldn't be surprised if almost all of them, but um, many of them, particularly in the Plains states, where they followed the buffalo because that was their food and that they had to follow the buffalo. So they would make ceremonies, including the sun dance, from, uh, in, in the rituals following the buffalo. So that is um, the reference, one of the references to the Sundance. So I would suggest that you go, oh, hi, Jean. Let me go see, see what's going on over here. Uh, da, 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 da. Hope you're doing well too. We're talking about, um, we just got done through the Buffalo Cowboy going through the comparison to rambling and rumbling. And now I'm talking about what I think are some of the significance, uh, significant points behind the, the Cody story in terms of why it's being discussed and also potential and I'm going to and then I'm going to go into how it's potentially hints uh, and we'll get, we'll get to that in a moment. So here the Cody is is a is a reference to the Native American the Sundance reference. You may recall that Robert Redford is also connected as we discussed with the um, Four Corners area. What's the name of that again? Um, I just, I just said it the other day with the sundial and the um, sun dagger. And uh, it, there's a documentary on it about the sun dagger, which I mentioned. I can't remember the name of it again for this video. But anyway, um, the Buffalo, so, so his, his Robert Redford also has ties to uh, 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 the Buffalo. And as you may know, Robert Redford has even a clothing line uh, in honor of, of the Sundance, which is the, the Sundance um, the cattle, uh, Sundance company. And you can find that online. Uh, then uh, here's a picture, a little token of the buffalo that I found on uh, a Native American website. I would suggest you go read about um, the buffalo in the Native American culture. Uh, as well as star references and study of stars within the Native American culture, because I think you might find it very interesting and thought provoking for purposes of work, working your way through the puzzle. And I think it's I think it's very important. And I found a certain video. I was tempted to po post it for you guys, but um, I decided I was kind of giving too much of my thought process away. But there are some very good videos that I would suggest you you go look at online. And I'll leave it at that for now. 
Um, okay, so, and the reason why I put this particular picture up of the little Buffalo token, it reminded me, I believe if I recall correctly, and again, I'm having trouble searching, but I'm pretty sure that the, the, the little statue that Forrest did at one point for, um, I think it might've been for Zoe. I can't remember if it was for Kelly or Zoe, but I'm pretty sure he did like a little statue and it was of a Buffalo, if I recall correctly. A uh, little doggy, come here. Of course she has to do it right in the next room. So anyway, again, that statue story where he's making fun of himself for doing a poor, uh, a poor statue of, of, again, I believe it was the buffalo. Uh, again, he's hitting you over the head with the same theme. So you have to think, okay, what am I supposed to be thinking about in the buffalo and uh, go from there? Uh, they talk about, um, I, I pulled one article for you on the screen that talks about the, the ceremonial pipe. There's a picture of, um, there's a picture down here. Let me get past it. I'll come, to, I'll come back to all this stuff. Uh, I just, since I mentioned the pipe, there's a picture right here. This is a picture of the white buffalo. Come here, she's making all kinds of noise. Come here. She's been like sleeping all day and now she's fussy. This is a picture of the white buffalo, which is sacred in the Sundance ritual. And in the story of the Sundance, there's a story about uh, the pipe, the, the sacred pipe being passed and being part of the ritual. So uh, again, the buffalo was even a critical part of, of the buffalo story. All right, then uh, it was very interesting to read about the Sundance. It sounds like it was, um, I don't know if there, it didn't sound like that there was necessarily, I wasn't sure if there were deaths associated with the buffalo and the Sundance. Uh, but there certainly sounded like there was some uh, pain inflicted, uh, at least at the early versions of the Sundance. Um, again, maybe it was you know a kind of a concept early on to appease, appease God, for in thanks to the buffalo, as we've seen other rituals. Uh, but anyway, there did sound that was sort of interesting to read. Uh, then um, here's a picture of uh, something I found online relative to the Sundance. It sounds like it was a multi-day function. Um, and here's the reference that uh, the sacred pipe was brought to the Lakotas by the white buffalo woman. So I would suggest that you uh, study that. Uh, da, 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 da. And the, pup, the buffalo and the pipe are linked in the myth. And don't forget the, the uh, forest pipe. Um, from I think it was Sitting Bull. So, uh, you know, he's again, cooling you into the rituals of the Native American people. And the pipe are um, a gift from the Buffalo to the people, the Buffalo serving as the mediator between, and I'm gonna botch this, Wakan Tanka. And I think the name of the Buffalo is something like Tatanka. Um, and again, I'm probably botching how you pronounce it, but basically it's very interesting to read. And I'll show you um, something a little more in just a second, but basically that um, it says, the, it's a central concept of the Lakota religion that the Buffalo is the life-giving force which sustains all being. Everything is seen as partaking of the sacred relationship um, with the Buffalo. So it's um, again, huge. One of the concepts that I have um, uh, researched and I think is part of uh, the hints to solve uh, uh, like the connection between the buffalo and actual hints to uh, maneuver the poem is the star reference. And I think that, as I've said in prior videos, I think that comes in in the second half of the solve and uh, you can use, along with other hints that we've discussed already, you can also use potentially, at least in my imagination, my solve, uh, the star references, which I think is purposeful, which he's giving you star references to sort of tell you where to go. And you say, well, how does that work? Well, I think that if you study and you start seeing the various constellation references, it may give you and read the stories behind the constellation references, 
it gives you a sense of which way to go once you're at the ninth clue. Um, and that's consistent with the concept of the TP. The TP being uh, what is in the stars is on Earth and what is in, on Earth is in the stars. And the TP with, um, uh, we've heard it, see, we've seen it on the blogs and we've seen it on the vlogs. The concept of um, as above, so below has been discussed by many people over the course of the years. And that's, um, again, what is going on in the stars, in the skies, is a reflection in the earth. So that again is if you if you're able to follow the stories you, uh, from a, and use and use forest star references, you can also use them below here on Earth uh, to give you directional hints as to where to go. So uh, and we'll talk about other star references coming up here. Uh, but again, that comes into play in my opinion in the second half of how you resolve the puzzle and, and use the books. Uh, okay, so again, here's the concept of the, here's the pictures of the teepees. I just thought this was a nice little picture to show you again, um, the, the concept of, of the oneness with heaven and earth. Um, I, one of the songs I sent for us was the Starry Night song with uh, the obvious reference to Van Gogh. I think that, um, I think that's a nice song for the chase. And so I'll put that song on my uh, link as I always do. Um, okay, so let's keep going. All right, so if you look, and I won't tell you my final conclusion on this, but if you start thinking about the stars and the sky, um, you see Taurus is by Orion and you see the Pleiades are on the right. Uh, so I would suggest you think about these and I'm gonna tell you a story or two about, about that coming up since, since I think the Cody reference is, is also a reference to um, Taurus, uh, which I think it's called, it's called like the white buffalo constellation in a native, by certain Native American groups. But it's interesting to see that, that the study of the sky, I mean, if, if you kind of think about it, it makes sense. You know, they didn't have TV back then, and so they story told based on the sky and the constellations. And um, so it's sort of sim interesting to see that across the world, you see very similar stories using the same characters, uh, uh, characters um, repeated. And so you're, you see it in Greek mythology, you see it in Native American mythology and the study of constellations. And, uh, and I believe that they're important to the second half of the solve for the book. Uh, and I'll give you a couple of illustrations why. Uh, here's the Scorpio uh, constellation relative to Orion. And uh, let, me, let me tell you the story of that. We talked about the scorpion under the uh, balcony um, in, I think it was the first chapter of, too far to walk. And um, so I think that was a reference to Scorpio. Uh, oh, oh, this, this is my little link. This is my joke, uh, my song in honor of the Bugs Bunny theme, which was posted on Mysterious Writing. Um, and I said that my song, one of my songs for the chase was the Claire de Lune uh, a song, uh, and I'll, and I'll post that song up for you. And I was doing a play on words with loon meaning moon and loon meaning like looney tune, like the Bugs Bunny. So that was my, my classical piece in honor of Bugs Bunny. And here's Bugs Bunny flying to the moon. So, uh, and here's my uh, joke uh, that you probably saw recently with uh, Major Tom and the joke stemmed from, I think you gathered perhaps if you saw my videos, it stemmed from the fact that I grew up in a town called Berwyn, uh, which was a middle class, lower middle class town in, in the Chicago area. And we had the Tower of Cars, which was, um, you might have seen in the Wayne's World movie, uh, which was based in Aurora and Chicago. They drive past my Tower of Cars. 
Uh, so the major Tom joke came in from uh, me picturing and everybody picturing that the Tower of Cars was like a rocket ship. So that's where that joke came in from. And uh, the other town that you, you may have gathered uh, with my Bohemian past, which is adjacent to Berwyn, uh, where my grandmother lived, uh, that was uh, a town called Cicero. So it was Berwyn and Cicero. We lived in Berwyn. My grand my grandparents lived in Cicero. It was a, a, a like a lower middle class middle class t uh, suburban town. Um, and uh, we were oh we were teased. Speaking of Forrest, be, you know, being teased as a kid, we were teased on TV uh, by this character called the Son of Spenguli. So uh, you know, if everybody thinks I'm some hoity lawyer. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it count. I don't think you can call somebody a hoity lawyer when they grew up in a in a town that was mocked with its tower of cars <laughs> that you had to pretend you were Major Tom uh, to deal with. So anyway, the reference, the reason why I bring that up is, uh, you know, again, these were various moon jokes and constellation jokes, and I'm going to show you uh, the Scorpio. Uh, these 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 constellation references. I'm going to tell you. Uh, a little bit about and how you've seen them over the years in the scrapbooks and uh, in, in kind of point you in the direction that I think they're, they're worth thinking about. Uh, okay, zebra boots. I believe that the zebra boots, in my opinion, is, is a hint uh, to uh, Mercury, the, the messenger god. And uh, let's see if we've got that here. Uh, which is also his also his name in uh, Greek. I think Mercury is his might, might be his Roman name is Hermes, and he's the Greek messenger with winged feet, and he's got a winged helmet uh, as well. And you he ties into the, a story with Orion, and I think that um, let's see if we've got it right here in this paragraph. Yeah, uh, that. Hermes comes into play relative to Orion that he got together with Zeus. They, and it, they urinated on a bull's hide, um, which was Taurus. They buried it in the earth and it produced the child Orion. And you may recall uh, the story of um, him going to the washroom in the tank when um, the people went into Yellowstone and, and um, took over Yellowstone when he and uh, Kansi were there. I think that that may be the reference to that. Again, this is just sort of, you know, or I, or I might have, hi Adam, or my imagination might have gone too far, but I did think there was an interesting connection that I do think that the zebra boots were a reference to Hermes and uh, the story of Orion. And he's been pointing to Orion when do I address cancer? I, I, I do address cancer in a different regard, not in a consolation regard. Okay, uh, we're gonna delete you because we're not gonna, we don't put up with that. Uh, Orion, okay, so there's many points to Orion that you've seen throughout the years. And in my opinion, one of the key ones that you've seen is uh, right here famous belt buckle. So in my opinion, the belt buckle is um, a reference to Orion. Uh, we see other references to Orion with, um, there was a story, I don't know if you remember, but there was a Beetlejuice reference uh, uh, in the many of the scrapbooks and um and why was he talking about Beetlejuice like the movie well there and I don't know how to pronounce it but it is a similar sounding word that is part of the Orion constellation so again I think that when they were teasing about the Beetlejuice the movie that he was hinting at Orion constellation why not address cancer since it's in the first book? Uh, right. I think you know what I just hadn't thought of it. To me, to me, the the main constellations 
were the ones I'm telling you about, and I'll show you another reference as we continue. Uh, but uh, I think that there's clear reference to, uh, to these constellations that I'm going through right now. Uh, let's see. You also see uh, the belt buckle repeated, uh, and there's, uh, oh, this, before I continue on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you about another thing where the belt buckle comes into play um, in just a minute, but this constellation might be the explanation for the Azure Blue reference. This is the dragon, I think it's the dragon, it's a Chinese dragon, here it is, the Azure Dragon. And part of that constellation in Chinese mythology is the scorpion myth. And the scorpion is the, um, just like Forrest is afraid of the scorpions, the scorpion is the mythological character that kills Orion and puts Orion in the night sky. So uh, that, I think is one of the connections. Okay, we already talked about the pipe and the buffalo and the Sundance. Um, oh, another connection with Taurus, which I thought was interesting and I had seen discussed in the blogs over the, the years was the myth of, of Taurus and Zeus and how um, that Zeus went on to seduce Europa and they went and ended up living in the, the city of Tyre, uh, T-Y-R-E. And, um, and so we have a connection with Zeus and Taurus and the city of Tyre. So I've done it tired has, was a, a, a potential reference as well as tired, um, which I'm gonna show you now, if I, if I bookmarked it. Well, I'll just tell you, just remember this, the sandals made of tires so you've had, you've been hit over the head, um, both from a mythological perspective with, with the Taurus reference, pointing you directionally to somewhere on a map that could give you a, a hint about where Taurus is um, and where uh, directionally, uh, you know, you, you have a, a, the tired uh, repeated both with the car reference as well as uh, him hitting you over the head when he tells you the story about the prisoner of war wearing the, the sandals made of car tires. Let me see what you guys are saying over here. Those three stars represent something other than Orion's belt. It's the John Muir quote. I'll take a look at it. Hello, hello, Chase has been quiet recently, huh? Yeah, except for silly things outside of the book, so. I noticed that people are moving on to tr other treasure hunts. So that's the best, the best thing we have. Uh, okay. All right. And I wanted to point out to you for something to think about. I noticed as I, um, uh, this comment came out in November of 2020. Uh, I, the, at this point, my case had already been filed. I already had been, I already had flipped out. Forrest sent me an email and I responded to him. Uh, well, first of all, he, his attorney said, hey, I got, you know, Forrest wants to send you an email. I don't think I have it anymore. But basically I said, no, 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 no. I don't want to have any private conversations. Da, 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 da. Um, and, and he emailed me anyway. And he basically gave me some, some kind of comment, you know, about Jack. And I wrote him back and said, baloney, you know, to the effect of baloney, it's, this is nonsense. And I said something about my solve and he didn't respond to that. And then after that, he came out with this, this communication about Cody. So that's in around November of 2020. And, um, and, I'll, and, but in, and I wanna show you how that was interpreted. Um, oh, you know what, before I do that, let me finish the thought about the Orion's belt. You can also see that something happened relative to Orion's belt in the revised version of Once Upon a While because uh, it was pointed out that, um, now my book is, I told you got water damage, so this looks terrible, but basically in the preface, across from the preface, there's the addition of Forrest wearing the butt belt buckle. So this was included in the revised version of 
of Once Upon a While. And it was in response, in my opinion, to uh, someone making the connection. Uh, so you have, again, I believe, him acknowledging that someone was on the right track relative to uh, 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 Orion. Okay, so anyway, I finished the thought on the belt. Um, so take a look at that belt and think about Orion. So back to Cody. So that was the background for the story. The, um, and again, you know, Forrest never gave me private hints, but then he would put out scrapbooks. So that, or statements. And so this time around, I noticed that people, this is like playing the game of uh, telephone, how you have to read him precisely. You cannot read gargled versions um, after him for his exact quote. So here I noticed on one of the blogs, it said, interest has switched to Cody, Wyoming. And that was from November 22nd, 2020. So if you read that, you'd say, oh, it's in Cody, Wyoming. And sure enough, after that, um, and around that time, another article, came, an article came out. Oh, now everybody's gonna run to Cody, Wyoming. So that, this is from online, you can see this as well. So now everybody, everybody was like, oh my God, we're gonna go to Cody, Wyoming. No, he did not say Cody, Wyoming. He said, Cody, here's the real quote. Um, I thought that once the treasure was found, the hoopla would die down. Well, it hasn't, and I'm getting almost as many emails as I did before. A lot of people are still searching just for the fun of fun, I assume you meant of it. And it seems the interest has shifted over to the Cody area. He never said Cody, Wyoming. You, not you, but you know, people read in Wyoming. And so anyway, think Cody the Buffalo, not Cody the city. Again, subtle, not overt. Uh, okay. Uh, this was something I thought was interesting. Um, I had post, as, as you know, again, my song theme, and I thought this was an interesting theme, not directly in terms of uh, Bob Marley, but along the theme of Bob Marley and the Buffalo Soldier song. Uh, and it's rough and it's some, and an interesting part of history, which was that the, that the um, people were brought in from Africa and put as soldiers to fight the Native American Indians. And that was the background for the Bob Marley song about uh, Buffalo Soldier. And basically the exploitation of these people to defend and conquer, uh, defend, well not defend, really conquer the Native American people. So it was really like the exploited helping others exploit. And I mean, we expanded the United States, but at the cost of other people. So both our soldiers who we used uh, in the United States and the Native American population that we significantly harmed in our effort to expand the country. So I think those are something that theme of the Native American history and is something that you should think about as well relative to the solves. <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, I, so I'm going to post my Bob Marley song for you too. And it reminded me, this is something I never sent to Forrest. It just was something that reminded me of one of my jokes. And I'll, I'll show you that joke too. And um, so the, the joke was when I came across the Buffalo Soldier the other day and I wanted to tell you my opinion about um, the exploitation of the Native Americans being one of the themes, in my opinion, of the book. Uh, that the, and again, using the song, uh, I, I saw that the second line was dreadlock rasta. And so my joke, one of my jokes to Forrest was, uh, as you all know, you all call uh, us lawyers even the, the even the ones who were uh, grew up by the the car, the car uh, tower. Uh, you call us sharks. So my joke was uh, the reggae shark. And here's your Washington Monument from one of the scrapbooks. Uh, and, uh, and the Washington Monument was also another joke 
uh, that I won't tell you about, but I will post, I will post my reggae shark jokes uh, there for you. Yeah, One Tin Soldier was one of my songs too that I liked. Um, I believe that's a reference. That was, well, actually he did a scrapbook on One Tin Soldier. Uh, so if you go back and look, he's very overt about that being a song. And again, that's consistent with the Beowulf story. And, um, you know, basically uh, the theme was the treasure to him is just stuff. And so think about that relative to yourself. You know, it's his treasure is really not the box that he puts out in the wilderness. Uh, to him, you know, there's there's downsides and greed and, and terrible things that come from that. So anyway, just something for you to think about uh, relative to yourself that, you know, uh, despite his success, he's seen a lot of negative things come from uh, from money. So, uh, uh, including, including just what we just discussed. I mean, the, the American people uh, came, I mean, we came here, you know, the, 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 our, our ancestors came here, depending on your, your ethnicity, and they, they wanted to expand, they wanted more opportunities, they wanted the fur trade, they wanted gold, they wanted land, and it was me, 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 grab, 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 and, and people were harmed in the process. So, uh, you know, that's something for us to think about too. Uh, okay, so I think those were the end of my jokes. There's one thing I'm not telling you about Cody, in my opinion, um, that's something you have to figure out on your own, but it's outside of a Native American and constellation reference. Um, so there's a little puzzle there that's still left for you. Uh, da -da. Okay, let me now let me move on to start how to start stout hearted men. Okay, hopefully you have a little fun with this one too. Um, and I didn't get anything out of um, the page 68. Uh, I never really got into the postmark thing, by the way. I did see a very good video about that, which I thought was very interesting about there are there are issues with the postmark, um, but that was never something that I particularly focused in on. Uh, I was more of a big picture uh, person. And um, so I never really studied that. Uh, I didn't really get too much out of the picture with Donnie, Joe uh, in, in Forrest from a hint perspective. Uh, he tells you in Stout, Stout Hearted Men, he says, he, now I had to go back and look at the age. I forgot I was going to do that and I forgot, but maybe we can figure that out right now. Uh, he says when he was 19 years old, so that would be 49, he says that he um, was without discipline, focus, or cause. He knew it was time to get serious about something because my potential was about to burst inside of me. Many of my high school buddies were preparing to go to Texas A&M and I felt left out. So I had read a story and I, I a couple things. When I first read this, I thought that he didn't go to any college. He did go to college. He played basketball at, um, and we're going to see it here just in a second. He does verify in rambling and rumbling that he do does go to Texas A&M after that, um, and that parts of the story are true. But again, the story is longer than what you see in rambling and rumbling. So that's where you, in my opinion, should, should pay attention. Uh, Okay, so if you go, oh, see, he does change the year. He changes it off by year in, in a rambling and rumbling. He says it was 1950. Uh, and let's see, he says, so he does change the year, 1950 versus 49. So I think he's trying to be purposely misleading that he didn't go to college. Um, he was, and the story goes, I believe if I recall, and I think it's here, that Peggy was, I think she was finishing up and he was, um, but there's an interesting story that, that um, this is where Forrest had the rival and the rival turns out, let's see if I can find that. He gets in a fight. Peggy's got a competing suitor and he, let me see, I know what to search for here. Let's see if I type onion. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see. This is probably where he tells us. Yeah. I was in the class of 47 at Temple High School. He stayed another year to play basketball. Um, he then hung around. Next two years, 49 and 50, he then attended Temple Junior College to play basketball. So he's off in the story. He, he's kind of, it seems to me like he's hiding the fact that he attempted, uh, that he attended Temple Junior College. He also tells you in this time, um, while he was waiting on Peggy, that he meets, uh, that, that the rival comes in and his name is Ted Whitlow. And Whitlow starts writing Peggy and Peggy shows for us the letters and he says with perfume in, on, in them. So we've got Ted hitting on Peggy. So Forrest's response was to respond to the letter and put onion in the letter. Uh, and then after that, he challenges Ted to a fight and uh, Forrest continues on that basically he beat up Ted. He didn't know if he would show up. He beats up Ted and then badly hurts his, uh, his fist in the fight that he had to go get it fixed by the doctor with a, and had a pin in it. Uh, and it was, I guess, apparently pretty gross looking. So anyway, that was, that was what Forrest was doing in 49 and 50. So we know that the stout heart of men story is a little off uh, that he, in terms of years, we, we do find out in Rambling and Rumbling, he did go there. So let's see if we can find that, Texas. Okay, here it is. So after he's done, it sounds, at least this is what it sounds like. Yeah, it sounds like after he's done with his years at Temple Junior College, that's when he joins his buddies to go to Texas A&M. Let's see what you guys are saying before we jump into that. No, no, the details, somebody, somebody says here in the chat, a million little details simplify. No, because the details, while I agree with you that you're looking for the big picture, the details show you the patterns that give you the answers, in my opinion, to the nine clues. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about payment of Texas, of Temple, but we know that he doesn't have any money when he goes to Texas, um, to Texas A&M, and that's why he has to leave. Uh, he said that he went to junior college, but he didn't finish. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I know there's another article somewhere that I read this story before, um, and I didn't go back to that, but basically he did go to some college. Uh, so, and I do think he tells you somewhere that he, he doesn't go to any, but, um, again, he contradicts himself. And again, that's where you, you have to start using the 15%, which is, you know, figuring out the patterns and, and his little lies and they're not to be, it, it, it's supposed to be fun. It's a treasure hunt. You're supposed to, it's, it's solving, it's riddle solving. It's, it, so to me, that's where the answer lies are in the mistakes. Okay, so back to this. I think those buddies went to AM, AM after graduation. Yeah, I'm not, I, the story doesn't tell us that point, um, but we do know when it was in, in 50 that he went, he joins up with them. So that part of the story is consistent in the book and in, in Rambling and Rumbling. Uh, and he basically explains how he went off and his parents didn't know anything about it, just like he went off on all his other adventures and how this is how he uh, continues on in um, that he, he's going to go on his own and, and um, he's very independent. Come here, come here, come here. <laughs> Time out. Hold on one second. Who's in Idaho working at the golf course? Let's see if they have that in the in here. Well, this is after the summer. This was after the summer of Yellowstone in 1950. When my Yellowstone summers were over, he says he goes. And in this, he says August 1950. So I guess we have to assume it was the fall year, um, unless he's being deceptive. I mean, there are a few mistakes that we've already seen in Rambling and Rumbling too. So, um, but in any event, 
the purpose of me going through rambling and rumbling is to point out discrepancies. Okay, so anyway, back to the discrepancy. Oh my goodness. Here. Come here. Come here. Hold on one second. All right, let's see if that helps. She's getting a timeout in the bedroom. All right. Well, he goes into, the, he's going to tell you he's going to go into the Air Force right after that. So hold on, we're going to get to that. But he does, he, he, he does tell you in Rambling and Rumbling, because again, we're comparing the book relative to Rambling and Rumbling to see if the story changes. And he does tell you in August 1950, he goes there temporarily, and he's going to tell you that he joins, I know, get off cupcake, she's so crazy. She went to the vet the other day, she's, the doctor says she's fine, she's got arthritis, because she's middle-aged, and, uh, but the doctor thinks she's hopefully got another five years in her. And um, we also fixed her tummy issue, I think. And um, like I said, I, I guess I gave her some sunburn from our hiking. So I have to, I have to put sunscreen on her. So anyway, she's doing fine. She's feisty as ever. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, so let's get back, get back to the story. So he does, he does consistently tell you the story that, um, he gets called out on being there. So that's that's consistent. He tells you he runs a half mile and he tells you that he hits a small country road. So we've got another country road reference like we had in, um, uh, what's the name of the chapter with Donnie Joe? Oops, wrong book. Uh, looking for Lewis and Clark, we talked about the dirt road and that. So he's another reference to that. So he's called out. So that's consistent. It's a much shorter story again, as typical in the rambling and rumbling. So look, in my opinion, for the differences. Uh, he does repeat the story that, that someone approached him from Texas A&M, asked him where he was going. He explained he didn't have any money and that he was leaving. And he tells you, um, that he left, which is consistent with the book. He left Forrest crying on the pavement and he went home and then joined the Air Force. And he then could, tells you he was 20 years and 15 days old and the Korean War had just started two months prior. And he thought that was the end of his relationship with Peggy. He then goes on to tell you a nice little story about how he joined with um, Frank Harlan's uh, father, or excuse me, Frank Harlan, they, they join at the same time, the Air Force. And um, the Frank, again, was the, the doctor, Frank's father was the doctor at King's Daughters Hospital, which is referenced in a scrapbook, who delivered Forrest. Um, oh, I meant, to, you know what, I'll go look at it for Saturday. I, I wanted to go back and pull that scrapbook. I don't think I did, and I um, I know I saw it quickly, but I think I forgot to cut and paste it. So I'll go back to that story with um, with Edard, which is Edward, um, spelled incorrectly uh, in the scrapbook. Okay, so so that's after the Texas A and M story. That's when he joins the Air Force. Uh, so I think, um, again, we see the at least third story um, about him uh, going home and um, something to think about, too, from a hint perspective. Okay, so then one of the differences in the story is the addition of the song, the Romberg song uh, from, the, from the, I think it was an operetta. I had never heard of it until the chase called New Moon. And it was a um, operetta with this song, the stout hearted men in it. And we see a clip of it in 
stout part of men chapter. And it's basically, you know, like, you know, the rah-rah um, camaraderie song. Um, but what I, th what I looked at and considered, and again, you know, this could just be my reading into it. I don't think it's a huge factor, but it did remind me of a few other things that I'd seen in the course of the years um, that I looked for what he left out of the song and what he potentially left out from the new moon um, story. Interestingly, the story of New Moon is Robert, a French nobleman disguised as common worker. So here we have our French theme again. Uh, and he's, um, he's rebelling against the monarchy in France, which I think is somewhat consistent with Forrest rebelling against the history and um, taking the side of Native American culture um, as one of his um, sympathies in his storytelling here and his scrapbooks. And I thought that was sort of an interesting parallel. Uh, and so what I looked up the full song and that's here on the screen. He it talks about, um, says, turn your dreams to a fact is up to you. If you have the soul and spirit, never fear it, we'll see you through. Hearts may inspire other hearts with their fire for the strong obey when a strong man shows them the way. Now, um, that was interesting to me because it reminded me of two, two songs, um, at least two, I think it was two songs, let me think. It reminded me of the Stairway to Heaven song, which was posted in Mysterious Writing, um, which we were teasing each other about. And uh, it specifically reminded me of, and I've told you that be on the lookout for hidden songs in the book and in the scrapbooks, uh, there's one song I'm not going to tell you that's hidden at least once in the scrapbook. Uh, it was on Mysterious Writing, but then I've seen it at least, including recently, in a scrapbook. And then there's another song that's hidden in one of the books, and I'm not going to tell you what that song is. Um, but this reminded me of um, The Stairway to Heaven being posted on Mysterious Writing. And again, consistent with the theme that the answer is in the whispers not in the overt, it's in the whispers and in the subtle, and how uh, this Romberg song in its entirety reminded me how Forrest was the Pied Piper calling you with his songs in the whispering wind. So I thought that was kind of fun because um, again, I do think he is calling you in the whispering wind uh, at least by two song references, uh, but I'm gonna leave that for you to find. Um, so again, one is in the books and the other song reference uh, that's a hint is in the scrapbooks. Uh, okay, so anyway, I'll put um, our Stairway to Heaven song uh, in, the, in the link too. Okay, uh, another, thought, another interesting thought song from new, the New Moon play, or it's not play, operetta, what was this um, softly as in the in a morning sunrise. And that's consistent with, and, and again, this could just, this one might be me reading into it too much, but I do think the Aurora theme has been repeated in a couple of different regards. And when I, I got the Reagan quote for you today. Um, and again, I think that the Aurora, uh, I wasn't sure as I was looking around it, it, whether I was looking for us, uh, when, when I heard Reagan, I thought of his Alzheimer's speech and the sunset of his life speech. And I thought potentially that the reference to Reagan was to that, it, that might've been that speech. But the problem with that speech is he references both sunset and sunrise. So when I went out looking, I was like, am I looking for the sunrise view? <laughs> am I looking for the sunset view? Um, and I think that the answer is the sunrise view and uh, I thought it was interesting that New Moon had this softly as in a morning sunshine uh, as another song. Um, and here is the uh, Reagan quote. It's, I now begin the journey that will lead me to the sunset of my life. But then he switches it to a positive. I know that for America, there will always be a bright dawn ahead. So that reminds me uh, of, of the sunrise and the aurora, which we also um, heard as a potential tie 
to um, the meadowlark bird, which we I told you about in a prior video. So again, um, not sure how far, that's my own imagination talking. Uh, we won't know that until we know the conclusion, but I did think there were some interesting ties at least to think about and some sort of poetic ties, which, I, which is kind of how I came into uh, looking at the book. Uh, another song I thought was a nice gesture, um, which remind was which I is my interpretation. I, I um, and I'll put this song on the link. Uh, the book kind of reminds me of the song "Sunrise Sunset," and um, I'll post that for you too. Uh, oh, hold on one second. I can't. I I, I see. Oh, so the meal. Well, that's what I was saying is that oh, so the Mio, with him on the bar stool is uh, very important in my opinion. And it's and so is the dancing with stars and hit parade reference that you you should be on the lookout for songs. And um, I know I've been attacked for that, but I can tell you that they're there. Uh, <laughs> Gene sell for two million. Okay. Uh, yes, I am on Facebook. I've got like, um, somehow, I, I don't know how it was, but all of a sudden I got all these people on my Facebook page. Um, so I'm very popular in the Middle East. So uh, anyway, uh, I've got, I, I, don't, I don't know, at first I thought it was because of the case, but then um, I just think it was like somehow my name, my picture got like passed around. So anyway, I'm a very international Facebook person, uh, but I don't post too much. I post pictures. I post, um, I've started to post these videos. I don't post too much. Uh, I post songs and you'll see many of my songs that I shared with you already on my Facebook page. I don't share too much personally. Uh, I don't really have a need to tell everybody every detail of my personal life. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Oh, and I thought it was interesting too. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying that this is the canopy of star reference. I told you, in my opinion, what the canopy of stars meant on um, uh, a long time ago. On on when before before uh, evil Greg became evil Greg, uh, and I showed you a picture of what I believe was canopy of stars. But I did think it was fun that I do like this song as another song for the chase, and it does say um, it is. Sunrise, sunset is, you know, how did, how, did, how did this all happen? Where did life go? And um, they're, looking at, they're looking at their children being married and where did time fly? You know, how did she become this beautiful woman? And, you know, it's, it's, it's a very nice song. So anyway, uh, how do you find me? I'm just my name. Uh, uh, but I got like 400 people like in the waiting room. But I think if I see... I think, you know, like the friend request, I got like 400 in the queue, but um, if you if you sent me an email with your real name or however you post on Facebook, uh, I could go look for it when when um, when I go to accept the friend thing again. Uh, and my email is Barb Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N, 323 at yahoo.com. Okay, so, oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you from this chapter that I... Um, thought was significant uh, was two things. Uh, he changes the story from rambling and rumbling that um, he adds that he slept in a, under a tree with cows grazing all around. And he also tells you about, uh, where's the barbed wire? The, um, here it is. I remember falling twice while trying to get through the dumb barbed wire fence. So I think that the barbed wire and the cows, again, that I think that's pointing to uh, uh, cattle raising. Um, and I also um, uh, think it's um, uh, the barbed wire um, in terms of finding that the final area uh, that you, you may find that there, um, cause again, he's dealing with his life crisis crises. And, uh, this was another one that teaches him life lessons. 
So uh, what are my jokes over the years? I don't, people don't know that I drive a, a, a like a Lincoln, but uh, it's an older Lincoln uh, that I, uh, uh, you, that was my Fenmobile. And so anyway, I made the joke about, um, about the Lincoln commercials with the McConaughey. So I'll put those on my link today too. Uh, and then uh, there's my Benny the Bull in honor. Oh, I do have, I do have, I will not put this on for you, but I, one of my costumes, because I haven't told you another one. I own, now if somebody's nice to me down the road, I own the Benny the Bull costume mask in honor of Cody. So there's our Benny the Bull from Chicago. I'll post a video for you for that. Uh, so the barbed wire reminded me of two songs. Again, my, my favorite group, the Imagine, Imagine Dragons. I've got Believer I'm going to post for you today. And one of the, I never sent him that song, but barbed wire, the barbed wire song by, I think it's Tom Grennan, uh, who, I, who I also like a lot. Uh, I, sent, I did send him that. To me, that reminded me of a forest between the barbed wire and the story where he tells you you know, stay away from my area um, in one of the books, like don't come within 20 miles. I think uh, that reminded me of the Tom Brennan barbed wire song. So I'll put that there. I also, uh, in my sun, in my sunrise theme, I saw that Tom Brennan put out a new song called By Your Side. Uh, and, and that was, that, I thought that was a nice song kind of about uh, the sunrise theme too. So uh, anyway, I'll post that too. You have a full costume too. So, anyway, I thought we'd lighten it up from the after the attacking attacking a thon from the other day. So uh, that was a true. That was a that that was one thing that I still have. All right. So there's my sunrise sunset. Uh, let's see. We did that. There's our bowl reference, and that's all I've got for you today. So those are some things to think about, um, and I hope you enjoyed. So I will come back on Saturday at noon mountain time, one um, central, two eastern, to go through my war for me, which is, which is as you know, pretty long. So um, hopefully we can uh, tackle that, probably work on that Friday and see if I can get through it all for Saturday. But boy, that's a, that's a doozy of a chapter. But um, anyway, that's, that's, uh, that's all I've got for the day. So everybody have a nice one and I'll see you on Saturday. Okay, thanks guys, bye.